Hey folks, today I am farewelling a dear old friend of mine. Actually, not just one, a whole bunch of them. I am selling all of my Nikon equipment and my Hasselblad gear and a bunch of accessories, pretty much every camera and lens that I own and making space for a fresh start. Now before the trolls copy and paste their prepared comments before even watching the video, let me be clear, this is not clickbait, it's not a joke, I'm not misleading you, I haven't been bored out. And this isn't me saying that the sky is falling down and that Nikon's going to fail or anything like that, or that you should be following suit. But for me, where I stand now in 2020, it's the right move. Now, I have been shooting with Nikon for over 15 years. Throughout my whole professional career, I've been a Nikon shooter. I'm a t-shirt wearing, MPS card carrying fan of the brand. And I'm not doing, you know, saying that there's anything wrong with it. And I know, I used to be called that Nikon guy, so I can only imagine what the responses to this video are going to be. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. You are not the Nikon guy anymore? What do you mean? I, I knew it. I knew it. That Nikon guy? More like that sellout guy. Tony, I just called Matt that sellout guy. Nice one, Charles. Nobody cares. And that's when I knew it was the right decision to invest $10,000 into Nikon. They're just, they're too ahead of their time. Safest investment I ever made. <laughs> I love it. What? I fucking knew it! Yeah, I fucking knew it. Mm -hmm. Fucking knew it. Knew it. Knew it. <laughs> Bam! Boy, you selling your Nikon gear? Why? Actually, why am I even asking why? If you're obviously switching to Sony, duh. Who wouldn't want to switch this on hashtag Team Sony? I'll switch any day. You call yourself a photographer. I saw the title and the thumbnail. So I clicked on this video and watched half of it so I can tell you that no one cares what you buy or sell. Idiot. Photography isn't about the gear, get over it. Photography is about getting out to shoot. It's about creative self-expression. And more importantly, it's about leaving angry self-righteous comments whenever you don't agree with something. Idiot. Matt, I always knew you'd be a brand whore. One minute, you're shooting Nikon. Now I see you with Canon, Sony, Leica. What's next, huh? <laughs> Okay, so let me tell you the real story. This stuff is actually already sold. I got an online quote from KEH Camera, told them what I wanted to sell, got a rough ballpark, did a video call with Brent, who I've worked with there before. He checked out the condition of everything in close detail on the webcams, and then we agreed on a price for pretty much all of this. I just need to pack it up safely, send it off to them, and then they send me out a check, all done in one transaction. I can't even fathom the number of hours that that has saved. And as a business person, that has an added value for me. Now, if you are interested in selling yourself, of course, you can contact KEH Camera, check out the link below. They will give a bonus 5% on top of whatever deal you agree on. And if it's over a certain amount and you're in North America, they'll pick it up from your door via courier so you don't even need to leave the house. So a really great setup. Now, let me just be clear about my relationship with Nikon. I've never been an ambassador. I did used to call myself that Nikon guy. I love the equipment and I chose it because of this. Because it just felt good in my hand and I liked the results that I got. I actually first fell in love with the brand with the D200. I, this is so nerdy. I was traveling in France with one of my best friends and my girlfriend, the soon to be wife, and my sister, and read about it in a French camera magazine, had my buddy translate it and was blown away by the specs. And that was the first one I bought. I moved from Olympus OMD cameras, the, I think it was the EM5 at that time, to this one. Over my years with Nikon, I've had that, I've had some entry level ones, the D300S, the D700, still a phenomenal camera. Uh, D800E, D810, D3S, D4, D5, sadly now dead, had a Viking's death in seawater. Um, and for me, the D850 is a masterpiece. It's 
everything I could have wanted in a DSLR when it came out and they're still phenomenal. And you know, you might think that this is a flippant decision or that I am always shooting with different cameras. That's to test and review stuff, but I don't buy things without consideration. I've been happily shooting with a pair of D850s since they were first announced and they're phenomenal. I love these as cameras, so why would I even consider selling them? As part of my planning for my business, I have a gear schedule and I would ordinarily be upgrading them in early 2021. Now, 2020 has been so different for me, like I'm sure everyone, I've gone from normally being on the road six months a year, testing equipment, shooting for clients, leading tours, running workshops, all that good stuff. And this year, since a couple of jobs in January and February, I've pretty much been bound to New York for the rest of the year. So this gear has just been sitting here gathering dust and I hate that. Now, as my business has shifted over the year, fortunately, I already had plans in place to make a slight shift. We just leaned into it with what's going on. Um, I've been doing more uh, video creation for mattgrangerphotography.com and artnudeportraiture.com. And having cameras that can track me in video is so helpful these guys just don't. So I need to set a depth of field big enough for where I may potentially move in the scene so it sticks with me because I can't have a videographer with me on set all the time. So I don't know what's going to happen with Nikon. For sure, they're putting more energy into mirrorless now like so many other brands out there. If it turns out that they bring out a killer pro level mirrorless later this year, then I may consider buying into that. I don't, however, want to be using lenses via adapter and even things like my beloved 24 to 70. This has seen so much of the world with me and a lot of my favorite images taken with this. The new one is still faster and much better image quality than the older one, so I would rather go native. Um, but I just don't know which way it's going to go. So if they bring out a killer mirrorless camera, a lot of people are going to move that way and then the market for F-mount stuff is definitely going to drop. So whilst this has value, it makes sense for me to sell it, not using it anyway, see what happens over the rest of this year and make a decision which way I want to go. So in terms of the other lenses here, the 70 to 200 VR2, that was on this camera when it took a bath and they're both dead. So that's actually now a paperweight. That's the stunt camera you sometimes see me use in videos. Uh, the F, the yeah, the FL variant I bought uh, with the insurance money. Phenomenal lens, but again, I don't really want to be using adapters unless I need to. The 105, I'm still tossing up on this. Is the old f 2.5 manual focus lens that I did a video on about uh, the cheapest bargain portrait lens. I may actually hang on to this because it doesn't have a lot of value anyway, and I could use it on any mirrorless I decide to stick with. Um, the basic, you know, the entry level cameras and the old D200, I'm actually giving away to friends so it can just start a new life with another photographer. The higher end stuff is all being sold, including my 503CW and lens and a couple of backs. I'm ashamed to say I bought it. I still absolutely love it as a piece of mechanical engineering and art. But it's, as you can see, it's still in near mint condition because it's had hardly any use and I don't want it sitting around gathering dust. I would rather clear the space, clear the cash flow and have it being used and loved by someone else than just sitting in my cupboard being, you know, hoarded by me and not being used. Teleconverters, a bunch of different lenses. There's only really two that I'm really conflicted about. One is the 105 f 1.4e. Love this lens. I first tested it in Iceland and then bought it for myself and I've used it like crazy. There isn't a direct comparison or replacement for this in the Z mount at the moment, but I don't use it that much and let's just see. The 200 f2, I love this lens. I bought this for myself at a special milestone in my career. And even though I don't use it that much, I may still actually keep this one. I haven't decided what do you think I should do. My feeling is that it's already depreciated most of what it's going to. I don't think this will drop significantly, even if a killer mirrorless Nikon comes out because they don't have anything like this on the roadmap. And this may be one that I would be willing to try if I get a new Z camera. The adapter, if it works really well, it may be the one that the adapter lives on as an exception because there's no alternative. 
If not, and if I decided to go with some other system, then I can just call up KEH camera and sell this one to them or you know get, get that all sorted out. I also have a couple of XCD lenses, 45 and 90 mil. I don't have a camera for them, so I don't need the lenses, an old Sony grip, a whole bunch of stuff. I have to tell you, whilst it's a little scary, it actually feels great to be making space. I don't mean to like go into Mary Kondo's territory. But to open things up for what I'm going to be doing next. I don't need all of this gear now. And to be able to start from a clean slate as I'm planning out 2021 and 2022, things are changing, things are still evolving and I'll get the gear that works for me. Now, so many people think that you just can't move from brand X to brand Y without taking a bath financially. I don't know that they're looking at it in the right way. For example, if I'm gonna sell 2D 850s and 10 lenses and buy 5D Mark IVs and 10 equivalent lenses, of course, if I go from selling used to buying new, you're going to take a hit. But if you sell used and buy equivalent used, you'll probably find that they actually balance out. And if like me, you've accumulated gear that suited you at the time, that worked for the jobs, but now doesn't so much, you might find that you go from two bodies and 10 lenses to one body, one smaller body, and five or six lenses that do the job. And you might find if you're buying used, you actually come out ahead, or if you're buying new, that you can get it without too much of a hit. KEH obviously buy and sell. Do check out the description below if you're interested in offloading any of your gear. If you're in North America, you'll get that extra 5% on top of whatever you agree to. You do the video call with them. If you like the price, boom, they'll send a courier to pick it up from you. If you don't agree on a price, then no harm, no foul. You don't need to sell it and it's still your gear. But for me, this is such a no-brainer. Well, I'd say it's a no-brainer. It's actually been a lot of thought and consideration and planning behind this. It's not a, you know, I'm not doing this to get clicks or to just be flippant about it. It's something that I take really seriously and I sincerely don't know what I'm going to buy next. Let me know your crystal ball predictions of where I'm going to go. Um, you know, if the R5 that I'm filming on here fixes the overheating, that's a killer camera with amazing lenses. Um, having high res, high speed and great video would be great if the video was reliable. I'm not turning this into another R5 overheating video, but I love the output, but I can't rely on it for what I'm doing now, let alone when I'm out on the road. The Sonys have come so far. I'm currently filming on the A9, but I own an A7R4, phenomenal stills camera. And if the A7S3 is as good as it looks on paper with the 124K, that's a real potential option as well. But so does the SL2 and the S3, so does there's so many great systems out there. So it'll be something I need to really give some thought, but I would like to narrow it down and minimize the amount of equipment that I'm taking just to a single lens system as well, and make sure that it's really suiting the kind of work that I'm doing. So I look forward to seeing your responses and engaging with you. Don't be shy and do let us know what it is that you're shooting with. Have you changed brands at any time? Um, and you know, maybe you're still using the same mount that you started with five or 50 years ago, depending on how long your photo journey has been. But let us know, and if you haven't already, do check out KEH Camera, all the details are below. And if you wanna learn about photography rather than just talking about gear, do check out my two new websites, mattgrangerphotography.com and artnudeportraiture.com. Those links are in the description below as well. Thanks guys, and for now, I need to box all of this up, pack it up, and send it off and start planning for the future. Cheers. I think that's everything. Moment of truth. Goodbye, my camera. Goodbye, my lens. You have been the one. You have been the one for me. Goodbye, my Nikon. 
Goodbye, my friend. You have been the one. You have been the one for me. Hope I'm not going to have to fall back on a career in singing after this. Matt, are you leaving because of the autofocus not being fast enough, or was it too fast and not smooth enough? Just let me know. Oh my god! Hey, so when you make lots of money selling off all that gear, do you think you can buy me Stim Sims? Remember the good old times? Uh, what? Maybe you should stop being a YouTuber and be an actual photographer. Stop thinking about your gear and just shoot 24 seven like I do. I never do invoicing, I never edit, I don't eat, I don't sleep. My child barely knows my name because all I do is go out and shoot.